Hello everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. We're going to take a look at Solomon's 2023 trail lineup. First, I'm going to have to clean the snow off my railing, uh, but let's get into it a little bit. I'll just tell you what we got here. We've got the Sense Ride 5, the Ultra Glide 2, the Pulsar Trail 2 Pro, and the S Lab Pulsar uh, 2. So they all have a, a particular distinct um, use in the Solomon lineup, but they all share a lot of common materials. So I'm going to uh, clean off my deck and we'll get into some of the comparisons. I've been able to run them on hard pack, soft and soft snow, as well as on firm surfaces, road, and even some indoor track. Um, we're going to have full multi-tester uh, reviews uh, real soon in written form as are some of our other testers in Germany and in uh, Colorado have been able to get them on actual dirt. Not yet much for me. So let's get into it. But first, here's a table I put together of the stats for the various uh, models we're going to talk about today. So we're all lined up on the railing. We're going to kind of go in order. Pardon my, my cough occasionally. Got a bit of a cold. So we've got over here the S-Lab Pulsar 2, which checks in at an incredible uh, 178 grams, 6.16 ounces in the US 9 sample. All samples are US uh, um, 9. So the uh, the Pulsar 2 is a kind of ultimate fast racing shoe. It was Killian's shoe when he was with Solomon. Really designed to handle Sierra now 30Ks, 6,600 feet of um, climbing a, and a fast downhill finish. So it has two and a half millimeter lugs. All the other shoes here have three and a half millimeter lugs. Um, I personally prefer the soft ground version. Number one, I haven't tested number two. I imagine it's going to be very similar uh, because the extra uh, two millimeters of lugs gives you a bit more cushioning, a bit more stability, and of course, more traction. So what's changed here uh, for uh, this year? Well, um, we've got a softer, uh, less kind of foot grabbing matrix uh, mesh here. Um, so I'm in a nine here. I'm usually an eight and a half. Fit is tr true to size and perfect. You'll notice I noticed a bit more toe box volume not so much from the sense that it's any wider, but because the mesh isn't as kind of compressive as it was before. Um, a couple other things I noticed with the Pulsar 2, and we have a video, is the front rock protection. Uh, I had at, in version one that it was a hardened foam plate. Solomon says it's profile and it's profile again, but it is now clearly more flexible and less propulsive. So it's kind of a more agile feeling shoe now, um, although I don't find it quite as explosive. Now let's move over to the Pro, the Pro Tra uh, the Pulsar Trail uh, 2 Pro. So this is really almost, you could say, a variant of the, um, the S-Lab Pulsar. It has more stack. So we have uh, over here, this is the highest stack shoe of all four of them at 33.27. We were at 31.25 here. Of course, that leads to more weight. Uh, we're at 9.14 ounces, uh, 256 grams in the US 9. The construction is quite different than all the other shoes. They all share Energy Foam, which is just a renaming of Energy Surge, the same uh, EVA Olefin blend foam as before. Um, and I would say that uh, the Pulsar um, S-Lab 2 here, although it does have that, still has that medial post for support of firmer foam, uh, is a relatively soft foam. We have the same firmness it feels like over here, maybe a touch firmer. We have a slightly firmer energy foam in the sense ride to my sense of pressing and running. And then we have the same soft foam we had in the um, Pulsar S Lab and the Pro here in the in the Glide, uh, which comes in at a 3226 stack height. Now back to our uh, to our Pro here. Um, it has uh, the soft foam, but it has a very firm layer down at the uh, down below. You see the darker black, um, and it also has. 
energy blade fingered plastic plate up front. So it is by far, I think, the stiffest. There is a bit of flex. Um, this is a shoe really designed for uh, fast running, I would say on somewhat smoother terrain because it is a bit tippy on the technical, but it's a very fast shoe. It actually did better for me on one of my uh, snow runs here to test in Park City than the Pulsar 2. I think that that plate, that uh, kind of platform really gave me great push off the snow. So I took down some Strava segments in this. In terms of the upper, it's a new engineered mesh said to be more breathable. We had limited time in version one, but of all the uppers here, this is my favorite. It is a bit more of a performance oriented fit compared to our um, Sense Ride and our Glide. Um, but it, it's really, the foot is super well hold, held. I think I would stay um, at a nine here as I am half size up as I would over here. Um, in terms of the others, in terms of fit, uh, in the Sense Ride nine, I would definitely stay a nine. I would not go to my true to size. This, this has kind of the lowest toe box of the group, a bit more, a kind of a narrower last than the than the Ultra Glide. Um, uh, it's it's kind of designed really as sort of a uh, higher mountain, uh, rougher terrain shoe, I think, than um, than the others here. <clears throat> it has uh, the stiffest flex, uh, except for the Pro. You can see just a bit of front flex, quite rigid behind. So this is a, a shoe for design for climbing, for fast ups and downs. Kind of a difference from the Sense Ride uh, uh, 2. I did not run the 4, but some of our other testers in the multi-tester review have, and we'll be able to compare it. But I did run the 3, and in comparison, uh, this is a much more, I think, a more forgiving ride, a more comfortable upper. The 3 had that kind of bomb-proof uh, very kind of rigid upper. Wasn't much fun to run. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if it's softer. I suspect it probably isn't. Uh, but this is your all-arounder. Sort of competes maybe with something like the Saucony Peregrine. Now, uh, in terms of its stack height, in, uh, we are at, uh, referring to my notes here, 31, uh, 23, and we have a weight of uh, 9.91 ounces, 281 grams in the U.S. 9 sample. So sub uh, sub 10 ounces, a great kind of all-arounder for the more technical trails. It has the same three and a half, uh, a three and a half millimeter Kona grip. A little bit different pattern than than in our um, in our Pro, and also a different pattern than in our uh, Ultra Glide. You can see, you note in the Ultra Glide those. Uh, uh, yellow uh, cut throughs to the midsole, the, the, where you can see the midsole, that makes a difference. Uh, and we'll talk now, let's talk a bit about the Ultra Glide, because the Ultra Glide is really the more ultra focused shoe in the group. Uh, version one was a very friendly shoe. Um, there aren't huge, huge changes here. Um, we have the same stack height. Um, we have uh, the same foam, as far as I can tell, firmness. But there are changes to the upper. The um, the overlays seem to hold me better, even though this is the most voluminous fit. In this one, I would go true to size eight and a half. I'm a nine here. It's a bit big. I really like the heel, the the improved heel hold here and the Sensi Fit overlays. Really, this is a shoe I think that competes with, say, this, uh, the Speed Goat from Hoka or uh, the uh, Saucony um, uh, Exodus Ultra, for example, as sort of the long run shoe. Um, we talked about the outsole, a little bit different pattern than, um, than the, the Pro. You can see here a different color. And somehow I think maybe the rubber might be a little different, a little softer feeling. Um, if I look back over at our Sense Ride 5 here, you can see there are no cut throughs in the Sense Ride 5. That gives it that stiffer kind of flex towards the rear. Here, given the longer distance focus, we have a much longer or somewhat longer flex. A little hard to show, but you can see we flex further back because of the grooves in terms of weight. 10.25 ounces, 289 grams in a US 9. Um, 
I will uh, highlight also the drops here. All of them are six millimeter drops, except for our Sense Ride uh, 5, which is eight millimeters. So that's kind of interesting. Um, in terms of pricing, of course, we go from the S Lab at 180. Uh, then we come to 160 with our Pro, and $150 for the Ultra Glide 2, and then finally 140 for the Sense Ride 5. So, uh, to kind of conclude, these are not major, major updates to any of the shoes. Most of the uh, update, as far as I can tell, is to the uppers. I find them, uh, although I didn't run, run the Sense Ride 4, some of our other testers have, do find improved hold here in the Ultra Glide, more comfort, but improved holes, still the roomiest of the bunch. Uh, I really like the upper over here in the in the Pro uh, as sort of a very comfortable performance-oriented fit. Over here in the Pulsar, the, I think are probably the most changes, for me anyway, uh, less of a feeling of propulsion, maybe more agility. Um, and this upper uh, really, I think, uh, gives you just enough more comfort um, and a bit more room if you have a slightly wider foot, something that the version one was a bit snug all around. Um, so they're, they're, they're all kind of, of a piece. The fast, short race shoe here, the uh, fast, uh, smoother trail kind of uh, cruiser, whereas over here you're all about agility, quick movement. Here you're about uh, steady forward. The Ultra Glide... Uh, the the ultra shoe in the Solomon lineup with a soft foam and a broader fit and also a broader platform uh, because uh, we didn't talk about platform widths but we have a 90 millimeter heel in the um, over here in the ultra glide whereas in the sense ride the heel width is at um, 85. And then we go over to our speedier models, only 75 here, and that's felt as kind of a firmer firmer ride, despite this softer foam, you just don't have that much width. And then of course, in the super speedster here, we, we come down to a 70 millimeter heel. So heel uh, platform width often um, influences um, cushion feel, and as these are all pretty close in uh, in stack height and heel, they're within uh, they're with between 31 and 33 millimeters. All of them. Um, the wider you get that heel, the more cushioned feel because you got more kind of energy foam at the rear. So this is by far the most cushioned feeling. Um, and then I would say, even though the foam is firmer, you you move over to the sense ride, and then here. Um, again, if you're a heel striker, you'll, they'll feel somewhat firm. Um, but this is the most, uh, stack height, kind of the, the quickest, uh, distance oriented shoe in the group, although more mellow terrain. And then here with that super narrow heel, you want to be up front on that forefoot. This is your agile, uh, short racer, uh, kind of, uh, the, one of the lightest shoes on the planet really here at, uh, uh, 6.16 ounces. Uh, it's 178 grams, which is lighter than most road shoes. So this is your all out. So thank you very much for watching. We're going to have a full multi-tester review of all of them uh, as our team has found some dirt. Unlike me here in the snows of Park City, I've run them on snow, hard and soft snow, and each of them on firm surfaces. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great run.